right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is there like a, oh, oh sorry. One, I had two questions, and one, right now you're asking for ideas, yeah. because I have a, a slew of ideas that I have that I just don't know who the right person to talk to. And secondly, do you have, um, I don't know if you took. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> 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 Yes. There it is. <laughs> I wanted to know if um, like, there was a sign-up sheet because after this, I'm somebody that generates ideas constantly and I don't know who to talk to. <laughs> I would love to get all of your email addresses or contacts so when I have an idea, I'll be like, oh, this person works here, maybe give them that idea. Mm -hmm. Or this person works here, maybe they can help me with this idea. I have, the, you know, and I would love to, because I'm always wanting to network with people, because I'm always coming up with ideas. Like, I've, I've talked to my sister, because I just recently moved back to Cayman, and I was like, maybe implementing a hotline in the, the, the schools, where it's published in the bathrooms, and that, if they have a problem or like even like the life skills classroom, something, mm -hmm. I don't know. But I would just love to get people's contact details because, um, sorry? Oh, do you have paper in here? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And, and so this, yes. these think tanks are certainly ways that, that, that can really generate lots of ideas and make, and make recommendations. I, well, she might not call it a think tank, but they, they <laughs> it works, yeah. Yes, it, 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 cer it certainly is. Think tank came up with this, actually. So um, those of us who serve on those kinds of committees, then uh, as, 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 as you rightfully say, we have to find ways that we have to bring, bring forth our, our, our ideas so that they can really be worked on and see you know, what really comes, comes from it. Because at the end of the day, we can always recommend policy um, and when, yeah. and not just recommending, but we can also advocate for. And those of us who are outside, outside of the government, we can we are more at ease and able to yeah. to sometimes suggest those sometimes. Yeah. Because I can fold a copy and then circulate it. Yeah. That'd be great. Great. All right. Any other questions? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to say the same thing as well, but I'll just start it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, they started one. Um, but I'll take two pieces. Oh, that means, yeah. I saw you taking notes over there. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, well, thank you all. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I had a few questions um, for Elton. I do work with um, Crossroads of Success a lot of my job. Um, those figures aren't surprising to me at all. Um, but what happens um, when you do have a case um, of sexual abuse? Where does the collaboration come in? Okay. Um, I really work with it with the wellness center. <coughs> we are the ones who actually uh, deliver deliver the program. The so we have our lovely doctor here. We we, ref, we refer the the, the, the the persons who may have disclosed or anything like that to us to her, and then it is pretty much taken from there. So that is how we, 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 we deal with it. True, internally, yeah. but it, it, yeah. the, the caveat is like the bigger picture of the system yeah. is a little more complex and convoluted. So the system would refer, obviously, DCFS mm -hmm. um, and the police also, um, but clinically, it would come to the hospital. Um, Sophia Chandler Aline, she deals with the, the childhood sexual abuse cases starting from, I don't know, I think less than two years old and upwards to that. that. Uh, and so there's a hedge funds care grant that covers that. Um, and I know Dr. Augustine and there are other professionals, um, Dr. Bodden, that do provide treatment to obviously sexually abused um, children and youth and adults. Uh, but basically, it's difficult because if we don't have that comprehensive national funded programming in order to you know, facilitate what is really necessary, it's sort of piecemeal. Uh, and people aren't really encouraged to continue, they may come for one-off, so it's a very sporadic process. And our program at the Lung Center is given a, a little <coughs> bit of that hedge funds care um, funding that's the same one for the hospital. 
Uh, and so we have to try to sort of deal with the protocol that they want us to go through, but then when it comes from a different source, we have to redirect it, and so a lot of people sort of fall through the cracks. Yeah. And it's yeah, very difficult. It happens a lot. Yeah. Uh, they're not getting their counseling mm -hmm. um, emotionally, physically, um, career wise, before they're actually sent into the workforce. So they're, they're, they can't even function in a career because they're dealing with all of this, I don't want to say baggage, but this damage. Mm -hmm. So they can't even, and when I get them, I'm counseling them. I'm not teaching them the ropes of the job or anything like that. I'm, I literally sometimes I just cry because I'm just like, how, how are, and how is? Yeah, unfortunately it's become mm -hmm. more of a self-directed initiative yeah. for the adult survivor. Yeah. Uh, and so you're, if you imagine, you know, however many possible survivors there are, if you take, you know, the ones that are very resourceful and very resilient and, you know, assertive enough to seek their own counseling, 10, 20, 30 years later, they may end up in a proper program and get the help that they need long term. And that's not the way it should be. And mm -hmm. no, the consultation with that for adults is limited to mental health and mental health. Mm -hmm. But not only that, they're, some of them are ripped out of their childhood, so they're not, they're not even getting to grow as an adult because they're consistent. They've been brought to mm -hmm. so they're never going to reach them. Not that they're never going to reach them, but it's, they might be, yes, 35, and they'll be like, wow, I need, I need to address this, like, 20 years ago. But we need to catch them when they're getting through the gaps now. Yeah, and that's why we're, what, in, what I mean, it's not a start. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. a lot more to do. But if you, if you look at some of the things that I was saying, it's, there are going to be a handful of treatment providers that despite all of that stuff, will go above and beyond and try to do whatever it takes to um, help the child in immediate need, but we can't just do it, you know, one person or a couple of handful, it has to be more of, a, of an accepted practice that we respond in that way. So would it, wouldn't it be a brilliant aim for any possible collaborative that we create? to use the parts of the body that are, are already in play mm -hmm. and act as a head to direct them. Because it has to be multilateral, doesn't it? Like, mm -hmm. listening to what people are saying, we're talking about, first of all, the fam family. Yeah. We're talking about primary education and school. Mm -hmm. We're also talking about the churches mm -hmm. and about the community. And if this information isn't disseminated to all of them, you're gonna have that fractious, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, conflict of, of interest all the time. So. If we were to create something, then surely the, the long-term aim would be to take the information that we've all witnessed tonight and make it as widely available and as culturally acceptable as yeah. possible. And I think we're doing that now at a, at a national level, I mean, under the umbrella of mental health, right? So we have the Mental Health Commission now, um, and just from a non-governmental standpoint, our think tank, uh, which I'm, I'm calling which is the Canine Association of Mental Health Professionals and Paraprofessionals. Mm. Sorry, right? Sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to have some kind of presence. Um, healthcare mm. is, you know, sort of not necessarily as accepting of mental health as mm. being a part of overall holistic healthcare. And so, having an identity nationally yeah. is really important because it is a mental health concern. It is a public health concern. It is all of those things. But we're just now beginning to have like a, a foothold in society and being respected. And I think with that collaboration, we will have a stronger voice from a treatment perspective, from a provider perspective, from the, the, you know, the effects of this on society being of grave concern. Um, you know, in addition to all those factors, human rights, education, all those things. Because with regards to mental health, that is desperately important. Exactly. You know, desperately. But it's not just a mental health issue, it's no. a familial issue, right. it's a, a church yeah. issue, it's a community issue, so mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense in, in, the, in the, you know, defining of almost the universality of mental health, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. But it isn't just limited to mental no. health, is it? Yeah, it's yeah. limited to essentially the well-being of human beings, yeah. which is a concern for everybody in the room. Okay. Unless there's any non-humans here. Like, <laughs> sorry. Or yeah, you yeah, just to, to comment, sorry, I think, um, you know, one of the big challenges, as you say, with mental health, 
um, and I know having experiences trying to set up a system like this in Toronto, was a lot of primary care would dismiss the idea of doing the identification and referral to some kind of an intake model to get the collaborative team on the mental health and bring in providers that, that perhaps they weren't used to working to. So it was that initial, the biggest challenge is whoever identif identifies the individual who needs help, whether it's a church or a school or primary care or even intake at a hospital or otherwise, is getting that individual to step up and say, oh, I know there's something out there that's a collaborative mental health model that works, believing in that and then pushing forward to get them into some kind of an intake that would then get them into that. And that's one of the biggest hurdles, is getting everybody else to understand there's a model, that it can work, and how do I access it, right? Dr. Rose, I have one more thing. Um, you touched on it, or one of you touched on it a little bit. Um, um, it really bugs me. I don't know if this is quite the time to say this in, but holding people accountable. So um, you've got the, the person that does the abuse, whether it's external or a family member or what have you. And sometimes they're not really held accountable. And they're going to let go or they it's a slap on the wrist. And that is something that really needs to be actioned. Yeah. Because that has infiltrated the society and caused such a huge problem to our children. Yes, but, you're right. I mean, exactly. they're not, how do we increase the accountability here? And I believe it's with this, it's with this, um, <laughs> you know, moving away from complacent, complicit behaviors and really standing up uh, on a person to person level uh, in tandem with each other, you know. But I think from a legal perspective and from a, a social service perspective, I see there's a disconnect because we have yes. this children's law, but it, it's based on a model from Britain where you're supposed to have this real family law component that we lack. And so if it's not criminally um, proven, then they, the judge doesn't, can't really enforce that all these things happen, it's just a suggestion. So until we have that accountability on a, on a you know, court system, in a family court kind of way, then I think people are just gonna say, well, you know, there wasn't enough evidence to go to court or to prove him guilty or her guilty, then, then I guess we can just sort of accept that it didn't happen and put her back in, in the homes. And the, well, obviously, the, one of the biggest things that I want to do is uh, advocate for the law when it comes to sex offenders. I mean, we just did a sex offender treatment training that was awesome. Yeah. Um, and from a victim's professional perspective, it was eye-opening to feel like, wow, for the first time, I, I could see how this is absolutely necessary and you have to encourage the sex offender treatment and see that compassion and empathy is, is required because it will never stop if we don't rehabilitate them. And so we have to have professionals to do that. But the difference is, in those countries that have these sex offender treatment training programs, they have laws to protect the victims, such as no sex offender can have custody of a child ever again. And here, we take them out of jail and we put them back with their kids or somebody else's kid. That makes absolutely no sense. How do we? How do we? Um, so, sorry, um, I know you wanted to jump on, but I have to. I have to go to our, our next participant. <laughs> so hold that for a little bit. I go two more persons and we come back to you. No, 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 please, please. You sure? Can go ahead. Okay. okay. I just wanted to ask yes. about the family law. You said that is lacking. How do we get that in place? I, I don't. Yeah. Hmm? Well, yeah. 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 Speaking yeah. of the law, that the court doesn't use. Mm -hmm. All these laws that the court just won't use. You see, um, Judge Ramsey, um, she, Ramsey, she used to, um, she used to, you know, put down her foot and tell people what to do, but she's gone. You know, so we need people like that, just like we're talking about mental health professionals stepping out beyond, you know, the, the role of individual therapists and taking those risks. We need people in all sectors to do the same. I just wanted to add to that, though. My perspective is that. We have to also focus, as I suggested, on education and training. Because I've seen it being very effective in other countries where I've worked, where we would train the legal professionals, we would train the primary care physicians. And it's so surprising, just to give you an example, one month after we trained the doctors, we had like a spike in the mental health referral 
just by providing that. So you'd be amazed at the results. It's been proven that these interventions can be very effective. And so along those lines, train police officers. I mean, you just go on and on and be more inclusive, and you will have results. We've had a lot of positive results from training the police officers recently and other entities um, with the mental health law. Just the general mental health law that we've now established. Um, and I've heard from clients who come through the door um, after being taken to the hospital under the new mental health law, and they're reporting that police officers are compassionate, police officers are knowledgeable of the law, and they felt very comfortable in that state of crisis to be in custody and you know, taken, brought to the hospital for admission. So that is really encouraging to hear. So like you're saying, this is possible, and we just need to continue to do it yeah. on all these important factors. All right, so we have two more comments to go. So I'll come right back to you, still have it? And then... Oh, she, she was first. Okay. No, <laughs> oh, okay. so I was referring to her, though. <laughs> Sorry. But I was just going yes. to comment on the like, power of referrals. Like, I'm just mm -hmm. talking from personal experience. Um, you know, I was in New York and I, and I created this own method of self-defense and empowerment for myself. And I just started to teach women and then from the word of mouth and then it became this, you know, a therapy program as well for victims of violence. And I was going into high schools to work with students and I was going to corporations to work with women on all fronts of the method to really prevent, survive, and then overcome violence. And then from there, it just grew into this group and ended up all the way into Manhattan DA's office. And then seeing how they were doing it so professionally as a as such a phenomenal system and just flooding the empowerment and the difference through the community. And so, you know, it's just, yeah. I mean, I'll talk forever, but, <laughs> but there's a really, like, that referral program to really, like, work that out here. I think it's a beautiful opportunity because it's so fresh. Correct. Best practices are always welcome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I was just going to comment off of um, what the, you gave a scenario of, like, um, sexual abuse, like the perpetrator's not um, getting reprimanded or there being some sort of uh, consequence for them, legal consequence. And I just wanted to say, like, I, I agree with that. And, um, but at the same time, like, I think there needs to be rehabilitation, like a focus on rehabilitation, because we could lock them up and lock them up and lock them up, but if we don't, um, get to the root issue as to why they're doing that action, it makes no sense locking them up. Yeah, well, I mean, we send them to jail, right? And they don't really have a rehabilitation program. Exactly. So we send them to jail to only come back out mm -hmm. into the work that they got put there in the first place, and they're just doing it better. Um, um, no. Not always, but the rehabilitation program for Right now, really needs some serious yeah, well, let's just say at least, well, they have started to do some things, and I'm not sure where they started from, but we participated the other day in, 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 in an actual training. Um, I'm like not sure, I'm, yeah, with about 30 professionals, um, most of them from the, from, the, from the prison system. I'm not sure exactly in terms of how they're doing it or how far advanced it is, but they have certainly made moves. To, to actually start treating sexual offenders. Um, so again, and, and, and again, this may have to do with, 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 the, with, the, with the information flow in terms of what happens, because even from that training, they were from various, various, various entities. If I can, I can recall, there were persons from mental health here, um, from EAP, Boston Wellness Center, the prisons, the counseling, the counseling center. So, there, there, there is some, and, and I can understand the frustration when sometimes you know you really believe in a cause and you feel as if something is not happening. But but it's also important for us to seek the information and to to get feelers out there, um, so so that we can know really what is happening and also how do we add our voice to to, to this and also really continue to to work on on the prevention. So prevention, the treatment. I think both are happening, but they are at different stages. Um, not as more important than that, that, that than the other, but but it is important for all all areas to actually be addressed. Um, but now, with with this, for example, is superb prevention, and it is important that now each of us also share this with 
whatever organization that, that we're with and also with our, our, our colleagues out there who weren't here this evening because that is how the information gets, gets, gets around um, versus we keep it within our organization, etc. Because the, the, fir the first point of video change is usually education. Um, and, and once we get that, it doesn't always change anything, but we're exposed, we become aware, we can share, and, there, and, and it's surprising you find advocates where, wherever we look in, in these various organizations. But it has to start with us sharing the information that, that we get. So yes. Just a quick thing to say, because um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I saw the other people going around, mm -hmm. just to put what department or what yeah, organization, organization you work with and what your job mm -hmm. title was, because I don't think everyone will remember, oh, I remember <laughs> this person, she works here, so yeah. I have yeah. 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 But I'm going to email everybody, yeah. and then this one is mine, this one's yours, Great. and then, um, thank you, Pam, you guys can yeah. 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 No, no, oh, this is her. Oh, all right. So just to remember to put your job title and organization. Okay. So Kate, did you want to say anything about your poster? I oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so it's just um, it's just a brief thing talking about the creative arts center piece, um, thinking about how the arts are sometimes a really beautiful way to connect with people who've had these kinds of traumatic experiences. Sometimes words aren't the easy way to get there. Sometimes it's the art and music. Um, so there's a little bit of information about that and chemo music therapy over there. Can I stop and take a look? Can I just testify to that? Please. We had a pilot project before I left the prison. We brought in Julianne, mm -hmm. and I set her up with a group of juveniles who were trying to play, pretend to be hardcore. <laughs> and so she didn't have a lot of expectation. Her first session, we were first session, we were amazed how this, these kids just opened up. Mm -hmm. We just testified to the power of those alternatives mm -hmm. yes. and music. Yes. It was just unbelievable. Yes, thank you. So we've yeah. seen it. All right. Thank you all so much for coming, and I feel like you know we've connected at this level, and we'll continue after Kim disseminates all that stuff and, and keep the dialogue going. Great. So, so thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. you. Can we steal some, some of this stuff for use, training our staff and things like that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we get this the serve going or whatever, we need to have some inquiries and go to the next day. Always in the schools. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Remember to send all the posts on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I might have been here. Yeah. Thank you. 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 I'm a believer in experiential therapy. We also don't have much support. Yeah. 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah, we'll take care of it. Thanks for your presentation. Yeah.